I forgot to put on my microphone, so tell me if I need to uh, speak up more. So tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, we have five of our 13 and 14-year-olds speaking their faith as they confirm the gift that God gave to them in their baptism. It's a chance to stand up and uh, share their faith with us. And what I like to do um, on these other services I'm not confirming is share with you some of their words. Honestly, every week, you know, I don't have much to say. <laughs> I try to make it real clear I'm getting it out of the book. And even as I'm doing that, you know, I like to steal from other people, you know. Get some good ideas from some other preachers and some Bible scholars. Well, these kids are not scholars, but the way that God has spoken to them, I think you'll be blessed in hearing some of their words. So I'm just going to share with you. This, uh, I'm reading about half of, um, half of what these kids have written. So Micah Basinger, his mom is our youth worker. That family first came to Concordia. Uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, before I did, when uh, she came to be a teacher at our school. So Micah, the first of the three boys, says, When I was little and my mom or Mrs. Downing, my first and second grade teacher, told me Bible stories, one of my favorites was the story of Noah. In Noah's day, the people on earth were sinful and evil, and only Noah and his family were righteous, knowing God. God called to Noah and his family they should build an ark to survive the flood. When the floods receded, God placed that rainbow in the sky with the promise to never flood the world again, and he promised to send a savior. Now that I have taken confirmation class, I enjoy Noah's Bible story in a whole different way. Now I can relate it to my baptism. Because I was baptized as a baby, I do not remember that day, though my parents told me about it. When I was baptized, God's word together with that water brought the Holy Spirit to me and made me a part of the family of Christ. Just as he saved Noah and his family, God washes me clean through my baptism. He will always fight for me and protect me. As I come close to my confirmation day, I look forward to having this connection with Jesus and with me when I have my first communion. Pastor says the words of institution, he hands me the body and the blood of Jesus, and he looks me in the eye, and it all comes together. My baptism, my favorite Bible verse, my confirmation, my first communion, all in a very physical sense, that makes it very real to me. If one day God calls on me to show my faith to the world in a way like Noah did, I hope I will follow God's instructions with the confidence Noah had. Second one here is, um, what? Last name is hard to pronounce. It's uh, Galky. <laughs> this, this is the fifth of my kids I've had the honor of uh, confirming. So, uh, Rachel here at 13. She's a thinker. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one. Why is he called this? Why should we know these three? We all ask questions. So we go to church on Sunday. Church is, or Saturday. <laughs> church is where you build friendships, where you learn things you never knew. We all know that God is just way too big, big, too much for our brains. But the sun is a topic that we can talk about because we know his birthday and we know why he came into the sinful world. God had a plan for us from the very beginning. Did God know that Adam and Eve would make the first sin? What if they didn't, and they ended up staying perfect? Sometimes I think that since Adam and Eve did sin, then why didn't Eve herself just give birth to Jesus? Then we'd be over with this right then. <laughs> why so many years later? But there was a reason. There's a song that says, Jesus loves me. How do we know this? We know it because he died on the cross for us. Jesus had an infinite love for us, and he wanted us to know that. If he had not died for us, this whole world would have been destroyed. But Jesus cared for people. Already when he was walking in this world, he did not just push them away. He wanted all the little children and the adults to enter his kingdom. Jesus even healed people right in front of their eyes. He healed the lame, the blind, the sick. So if you are in a bad situation, then you can pray and pray. Tell Jesus your problems. He will never, or he will answer and guide you through the tough times. Instead of worrying, just pray. Because I can tell you that's what I do, and it works. Jesus is our forever friend. 
And wherever you go, he will always see you and look at you and know how wonderful you are. So don't be afraid to talk to him once in a while. He wants you to. Jesus cares for me. He loves me. That's all I need. So uh, this one is Ethan Schaefer. He talks about the Lord's Prayer. He says, when I pray the Lord's Prayer, I understand why I'm saying it, who I'm saying it to, and what I'm praying for. Like the first few lines in this prayer, we praise God and Jesus for their holiness and greatness. We're telling God that we hold great love and respect for him. As we go deeper into the prayer, we discover the true meaning of our faith. Not what we can do for God, but what God can do for us. We ask of him to care for us and nourish us, to forgive us, to help us do good. Like all the followers of faith, I know that I too can rely on God to help me through tough times, help me not to be tempted by the evil things in our world. I understand that through my faith in God and Jesus, I gain forgiveness for my sins. Towards the end of the prayer, we establish his glory and power, and once again, our love towards him. Amen. Okay. This one is uh, Jonas, Jonathan Sisk. He's the uh, youngest of three in his family. Um, his mom sometimes helps with our youth group, too. And he says, my favorite Bible verse, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So this verse talks about Jesus' death. He was given for us and for all humanity. If that didn't happen, we would all be in hell. But remember, that's just one part of it. Another part of it describes that whoever believes in him will not die, but they will have everlasting life starting now and lasting forever in heaven. Believe in him means believe that he is saving our life. We believe that we had nothing to God giving his son, so I'm believing in Jesus. <laughs> he saves us from death and he gives us everlasting life. That's the good news that allows us to believe in him. He could say, you can't do a lot of things. But no, he just asks for belief in the thing that he has done. That's not just another great deal. That's a completely free gift. I'll take it. <laughs> this whole verse also talks about God's amazing love for us. He sacrifices his son. That's a big sacrifice. If he created me and sacrificed his loved one for me, I will definitely believe in him. He gave us one and only son because he loved us. That's why I love God, and I love this verse. And let's see, the last one I want to share with you is um, Andrew Whitlow, um, second of the two boys his mom sings in our praise band. Andrew says, I choose Psalm 18 for two reasons. One, because it was written to God as a song of thanks from David. And two, because it explains who God is in just one verse, verse two. It's an easy verse to understand because it is direct and explains exactly who God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is to me. Verse two begins, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. This means that he is a mountain, a safe place, and the one who will come to my rescue when I am in need. He is the one I can go to when I need a safe place to hide from my enemies. Then the psalm says, he's my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. This means that I can depend on him to help me when I ask for help. I can trust him because God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for me. Because he did, I know that I can count on him to help me when I need it. My shield and the horn of my salvation, it says, my stronghold. This means that Jesus is my wall to hide behind when things go south. He will fight a strong fight to protect me from my enemies. There's a song that our Concordia Praise Band sings that comes from this verse, Everlasting God by Brenton Brown. This song speaks to me because it tells me that God will tolerate me and even forgive the poor choices I may make. He will not give up on me. 
That's why I don't give up on him. He will defend me and give me strength. When I am tired, he will give me hope and lift me to the freedom of heaven. This Psalm 18 is a great psalm, especially if you like music. There are so many songs that are written from it. Read all the verses, 1 to 50, and see how many songs you can discover that come from just this one psalm. Many verses, many psalms, many words of scripture, many different Bible writers, many different preachers. And yet it's all about hanging on to Jesus, isn't it? And the wonderful thing is we each have our own voice and our own experience. And we each have our own opportunities. God knows to put you where you get a chance to speak up. So, shorter than my sermon. <laughs> You're doubly blessed. You got to hear five preachers, and they were quick. Pray for these guys as they're growing up in the faith. Um, remember your own confirmation day or your own baptism day and uh, the gift that God gave to you one-on-one. -on -one. You've got a firm place to stand in this God. He's claimed you as his own. And that means that, man, you can always come back to him and you've always got more love to share. I'm going to invite you then to, um, let's, let's gather, well, I, let's first pray, and then I'll, I'll gather our hearts in a formal prayer. We do thank you, Jesus, for these five. We thank you that you have claimed each of us as your own. You have poured out into this world the water of baptism. You uh, feed us at your table. You gave Jesus to take away the sin of all the world. Help us, Lord, to rejoice in that truth, to stand firm on our faith, and so to share his love. Bless these five, Micah and Rachel and Ethan, Jonathan, and Andrew, as they grow in their faith. Let us, Lord, grow with them until that wondrous day when together we see you face to face. We pray in your holy name, Jesus.